Come learn the four facts regarding scoliosis treatment for teens. Searching for treatment when it comes to scoliosis can sometimes be very confusing, and it can be very confusing regarding the information that you see on, on the internet and websites, and when you're either you speak hearing from somebody who focuses on conservative care or focusing somebody who focuses or somebody focusing on surgical care, and it even becomes more confusing is when you're a parent of a teen and the teen is involved in trying to understand what's the best treatment options, and there's some very specific facts when it comes to scoliosis treatment, and the first thing is that we have to understand that we think that scoliosis is most commonly prevalent in adolescents and we do know that adolescent it's the most common age that scoliosis is diagnosed and this is when adolescent scoliosis is typically diagnosed between 10 years of age and 18 years of age however even though this is the most common age of diagnosis we don't believe this is the largest population of patients that actually have scoliosis but since this is the, uh, the most likely time of diagnosis this is also one of the big times that most patients are treated and when you look at to understand there's some very things that you have to understand when you're considering treatment number one is scoliosis is not curable no matter what treatment that you choose to do, whether it be surgical, whether it be non-surgical, that there's no cure for scoliosis because the majority of cases, we don't know what's causing the scoliosis. And because since most cases are idiopathic, they have an unknown cause, therefore we have no way of actually addressing or correcting the cause of scoliosis. So therefore we always look at scoliosis as not being curable. However, it is treatable. It is definitely treatable and we understand how curves progress over somebody's life. So therefore, since we understand the progressive nature of scoliosis, we understand the risk factors associated with progression so we can treat curves and prevent curves from becoming more severe. And even now, we can even reduce curves during this time to make actually curves smaller. Now, a question I always get asked is that if we knew the cause, could we correct it? And I've always stood on the idea is more than likely not because knowing the cause of scoliosis doesn't always mean that we're going to be able to fix it once it becomes or progresses into a severe stage. And the way I like to equate it, it's kind of like an earthquake. We know exactly what, what causes an earthquake. And, uh, you know, the plates shift and it causes tremors and things happen. And typically the things that happen are is, is structural. We have structural damage to buildings and houses. And when, in the worst case scenario, the whole building collapses. Well, if we corrected the cause now, after the fact, realign the plates under the ground, doesn't mean the building's gonna come back because it caused a structural damage or structural uh, adaptation as a result of the, of the cause. And that's what scoliosis is. Something causes scoliosis, it progresses, and by the time we find it, it's already become structural. So in most cases, even if we knew the cause, we're still not gonna cure it, okay? But we can treat it, we can definitely treat the problem. Also understanding that adolescent idiopathic scoliosis isn't always easy to detect. A lot of times patients will discount the fact that they may or may not have scoliosis or may not even consider it to be a problem even though they notice something because they don't have a lot of symptoms. Patients typically, especially kids, do feel no pain as a result of scoliosis. They feel nothing. They feel no pain. The only symptom that typically kids have and the most common initial symptom is going to be asymmetry. It's going to be postural changes. It's going to be uneven shoulders, uneven hips, uneven waist, uneven rib cage. It's going to be just what you see. They're not going to come, come, come to you as a parent and say, my back hurts or my neck hurts or my mid back hurts. It's going to be cosmetic in the beginning is what you're going to see in their, in, in their posture. So therefore, don't take postural changes lightly in your children during growth because that can be the first and only sign that you would have as a result of them having and developing scoliosis. It's not until they become an adult and the curve progresses as a result of compression over gravity that patients feel pain. That can be 20, 30, 40 years of age, not at 13 or 14, right? So don't discount um, postural changes because they never feel pain. Early detection is almost always beneficial, and this is the third fact. The sooner you find a curve, the sooner you treat it, the better the changes. I always have this rule of thumb that smaller curves always respond better, the younger patients always respond better. At the time you detect scoliosis, the patient's never gonna be younger than that moment, and normally the curve is never gonna be smaller than it is at that moment, because more likely curves gonna progress with time, growth, and age. So treating curves smaller, treating them younger, always produces a better response, especially in conservative models. So 
understanding that it increases the success of treatment. The younger, you, the smaller you treat these curves, the more proactive you are towards treating small curves, the more likely you are to have a severe curve, meaning if you treat curves at 15 or 20 degrees, you're much less likely to have a curve at 40 or 50 degrees a year or so later because of treating a small curve will more likely keep you with a small curve. Also, small curves are much less complex than severe curves. They respond better, they're less stiff, they have more flexibility, so they get a much better response to all the conservative approaches that we use regarding treating a scoliosis. So therefore, we never ever want to wait and let curves become bigger. Now, why then why is the first treatment option when it comes to the treatment of scoliosis in traditional approaches, curves 25 degrees or less, they call them mild and they say we just watch. Because in traditional treatment option, the number one treatment to reduce a scoliosis is surgery. And surgery is a very invasive treatment option that alters a patient's life from that moment on. So if that was your only treatment option, you would want to wait till the curve becomes severe enough to use that treatment. So when they say, oh, you have a mild scoliosis, don't worry about it, let's let it get more severe, and then we'll consider surgery if we need it, it's because they have no other tools. However, mild doesn't mean not a problem, it just means that it's mild relative to surgery. So therefore, treating small curves is always beneficial. Here at Scoliosis Reduction Center, we always recommend treating curves around 15 degrees. That's when we'll start to treat them because we know if we can treat 15 degree curves and reduce them, we definitely have a much better chance at getting a much better reduction and never having a severe curve later on. The fourth fact is that adolescent idiopathic scoliosis should be treated proactively. What I mean by proactively is that they should be looking at reducing the structure that's associated with the scoliosis, not just treating the symptoms associated with the scoliosis. And normally this means it's developing a customized treat plan that's gonna address all these patient variables and all the conditions associated with this patient to give the very best outcome. It also means most of the time that you're gonna be integrating multiple forms of treatment. You're not gonna just be doing just exercises or therapy or bracing or in-office therapy or chiropractic care. You're gonna be using all of these different therapies and all these different re rehabs in something that I call a multimodal approach. Most scoliosis treatment fails because it's fragmented, meaning the patient is seeing one therapist over here and one doctor over there and one an orthotist over here and a exercise physiologist over here and a scoliosis exercise person over here and all these people are doing different approaches and approaching the spine differently. In our center, the reason why this tends to go away is because we have a multimodal approach, but it's all customized and developed by one doctor typically me, providing the decisions for every single person to get the very, very best results. So therefore, having a very proactive model that's gonna be multimodal, that's gonna be looking at all the, the variables associated with is one key fact that's associated with good scoliosis treatment. So Scoliosis Reduction Center, we offer very proactive treatment, like I mentioned. We wanna be ahead of the progression of the curve, so we wanna act uh, as soon as we see curves and make them smaller before they ever become severe, because the treating a small curve is a much better chance of, get, of never having a severe curve. And then lastly is that if you're checking for signs of scoliosis, understand that postural signs are normally the first sign of a problem, not pain. So don't take postural problems lightly, and if you see something, have a further evaluation regarding your son's or your daughter's scoliosis. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.